trying to um, comprehend an infinite God with a finite understanding. Every experience we ever have has a start point and an end point, and uh, um, God is so much bigger than that. Um, it's not really something to be almost explained, it's saying that God's desire as we experience it. I'd been taught the Holy Spirit was there, I'd been taught that um, there was God the Father, there was Jesus, and then there was the Holy Spirit, and that was kind of like our our gift from Jesus when he died, and I knew like all the, like, the biblical side of stuff, but never really had like a personal kind of um, relationship with him, and I think a major turning point for me was to realise and understand that I need a separate relationship with each aspect of God. So I need a relationship with God the Father to understand that I'm loved and I need um, a relationship with Jesus to understand that I'm forgiven and then I need a relationship with the Holy Spirit to understand that I'm not alone. Here in the Bible about God's peace that passes all understanding and that's really what the Holy Spirit is the most strong that he's been in my life has been in the times that it's been the most tragic mm. uh, the most traumatic uh, the the time that he was really there for me was when my sister passed away uh, I remember like every single detail about that night because it was just so sudden and so tragic um, like, me and my family we, just, we got back from the hospital I just went up in my room and tried to shut everything out and I can remember praying like what does this even mean and that's when the Holy Spirit came and he was just I couldn't explain it, the, the peace that I felt mm. even during the most tragic time in my life. I think it's being open-minded as well because you don't want to like box it in yeah, and be true. like, oh yeah, this is when I've encountered the Holy Spirit before, so if I do that again, like if I, yeah. if I say this prayer and say these words, then I'm gonna, you know, feel all yeah. great and I'm gonna get that feeling, so it's just every time it being okay to be like, ah, oh, like Holy Spirit, I don't really know what you want to do yeah. now, but it's just, it's like a trust, isn't it, that yeah. you've got, it's like a, a close friend that you would yeah. trust that you'd know. The time where God was just someone I worship, but I'll see him on a Sunday, but he wasn't as personal as yeah. someone that I can call Father and yeah. that I can talk to about what I'm going through, like work or financial, so definitely without the Holy Spirit, I'd say, I'll still be in that mindset that God is just this unreachable, mm. sat on a throne, mm. white beard. Um, my first real experience away from church where I experienced the Holy Spirit was um, I was sat in an audience or stadium working on my laptop and I, I, I just thought about the goodness of God. And I realized once we acknowledge God in the places where it's away from our home or our secret place or church, mm. He blesses it because we've given Him divided attention. And what I realized was like, I remember in that particular moment feeling overwhelmed. I'm in the stadium, so it's about 10,000 people there. And I'm on my laptop and I'm like, God, you're so good. But I did it from the heart and the Holy Spirit came down to me and I started crying and people think, what's going on with him? And I thought, oh, maybe it was the moment. It was so surreal for myself. I thought it's because I was in such an environment. But I thought, there's more. We can acknowledge God to the point where um, it's just from a place of worship, mm -hmm. from a place of just um, knowing who he is, what he's done for us. And um, when we do we, when we do that generally, I've realized we can host the Holy Spirit wherever we go. The, the, a defining moment for me was when um, there was a service when at church, and I, I remember going to the front um, and thinking, my mind was just uh, composed on a thought that I want to access this, I want to know the Holy Spirit because I believe that he's going to show me more about God. So in my head I'm thinking, I need to speak in tongues, I need to speak in tongues, I need, I've not been filled with the Holy Spirit unless to speak in tongues. And I remember that Pastor Stuart placed his hand on my head and he just said, really simply, stop trying. And it was like those two words were just so defining over trying to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit is not forced and it's not from me wanting it so much. It's actually just coming forward to him and saying, I'm here, have, have your way in my life. And I remember sat on the, at, at lunchtime and you know, my friends, knew that I made a commitment to Jesus, but there's a difference between making a commitment and 
then people seeing that something's really changed. Yeah. I just really remember the sense of, um, as I was just sat there by myself, and um, the Holy Spirit just fell. I didn't want to leave His presence, so I didn't. I remember sitting the same spot for 45 minutes for my whole lunch break. And by the end of the lunch break, I just, um, you know, it was hiding the tears because I, I will get bullied for this. Um, but I just remember at the end of that lunchtime, I just felt like I can't explain what's just happened, but my life has just been changed. And it was, it was by no merit of anything I did. Yeah some kind of gift was just given to me. God has always been directing me in the right point, so I think it's just having confidence that actually God might be already speaking to you and He actually might, the Spirit might already be working in your life, you might have just not realised it, so it might not be this far distant thing that is like unreachable and this weird thing that only happens to some people, it's actually, it might be right there, just ask God to reveal it to you. We serve a, a limitless God in every way yeah. and just because uh, the amount of times that I've gone up for, for prayer for being filled with the Holy Spirit I've been I've had this picture in my mind okay I'm gonna speak in tongues okay I'm gonna fall over in in God's power and that's not happened mm -hmm. uh, but I learned that you know I should never be disappointed in that because the Holy Spirit wants to talk to me in my my language my own way he's a listener he's a reminder he's a teacher um, he leads um, I think that's what we all want in life, in some way, shape or form. Yeah. There's no limits to how the Holy Spirit moves, and when it's genuine, it doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, I learned that um, it's good that we are always aware that He's always with us. The Word says He never leaves us, nor forsakes us. Mm. And if we can consciously always be in that place of, okay, God is with us, God is with us, things can happen wherever mm. we are. Amazing. Um, if anything we talk about, tonight it's like midnight here so everyone's getting weird and tired but if there's anything we've spoken about tonight that affects you um, if you have any questions about the Holy Spirit or the Trinity which is kind of the tripart nature of God the Father God the Son the Holy Spirit if you've got questions comments or if you want a member of the team to um, pray with you we would love to hear from you um, the best way to get in touch with us is to email us at youngadults at audaciouschurch.com. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Um, we're just kind of normal people. We're like you. We're figuring it out as we go along. Um, but at The Belonging, it's a safe place to journey with others as we walk with our Saviour. Um, so we hope you enjoyed this and um, we'll see you soon.